Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your children come to hear from you, not from me. So, Father, as we come now to break the bread of life, we pray, Lord, that we eat it. We pray, God, that we see what you want us to say. Hear what you want us to hear. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for the ability to pray. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Father, let me not hinder you. Amen. In the book of Mark, there's a word from God. Mark, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. When I was reading this, and God was in my heart, I thought about a cartoon character I used to like. I don't know y'all probably didn't watch this down here in the South because y'all are educated than I am, but in the North we watched Mr. Magoo. Y'all used to watch Mr. Magoo? Yeah. Mr. Magoo, he used to get in his car, he couldn't see what the lady was. He, he would do everything that he wanted to do. Yeah. Call people road hogs. And, but he's one of my favorite cartoons. And though he was visually impaired, he believed that he had perfect sight. No matter what he was doing, he was always right. My daughter once told me, I thought I was right. One day I was trying to tell her something. Amari said, Daddy, you're confidentially wrong. You just think you know it, but you're wrong. Well, sometimes as Christians, we become like Mr. Magoo, we, be, we become visually impaired. All right. All right. We walk with Jesus, but because we are, became entangled in the darkness of society, we become visually impaired and we don't see Christ as we should see him. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. You see, it's by his grace that God has given us a route of escape. Come on, man. Even when you're in the surroundings that have you dark and visually impaired. And somehow God seems to shine a light or revelation to you so that you can see into this dark tunnel. Are oh, you hearing me this morning? Yeah. In our text, Jesus was preparing his disciples for ministry. You see, they were in church they was with the church, who was Jesus Christ, but they didn't know the church. All right, all right. Their eyes was visually impaired by their society. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they walked with Jesus, but they didn't know him. And thereby, when if you don't know Christ, then you really don't know yourself. Yeah. Because how can you be made in the image of God when you don't even know God? All so right. therefore, how can you know the image of yourself? Right. You don't even know who you are. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. They walked with Jesus, but they did not know him. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, it's good to be in church. <laughs> but, if, but God has called all of us to a ministry. God has called all of us to a ministry. In other words, every day Jesus said here in Luke 14, 27, he says, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be what? My it's time for Christians to stop carrying their own identity, stop having their own agenda, and carry the following, the agenda of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, we've been talking about Jonah for the last three weeks. Yes, sir. And Jonah would not preach to a community because there was a heathenistic community in his eyes. Yeah. But God seen more than Jonah can see. All right, all right. He seen a town named Nineveh that was going to repent and come to him. And because Jonah's vision was impaired by society, he could not function in the ministry in which God has ordained for him to have. Oh, oh Lord, can you hear me? Some of us are not getting to our ministry where God has placed us. We are not getting to our destination in life because we're visually impaired. Life have us entangled in the dark web and tell us that we can't do something, but we know through all things, through Christ Jesus, all things are possible. 
You can't get entangled in this vision, this, this, this darkness of life. Let's go to the text. Chapter 8, verse 13. Let's start at verse 11. Then the Pharisees came and began to dispute with him, seeking, <clears throat> seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? But surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Mm -hmm. And he left them, verse 13, he left them, and getting into the boat, he departed to the other side. All right, all right. Now, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 1, it reports that it was not only Pharisees, mm -hmm. but it was the Sadducees. Uh -huh. yeah. They was here in this lining of questioning our Savior. You see, they came from Jerusalem to argue with him, not to learn from him. They asked Jesus to confirm his divine authority and trustworthiness. Yeah. And many people today are still waiting for God to prove to, he, to, prove to them who he really is. Yeah. Yeah. All the attributes in life. Mm -hmm. Everything that like God has shown us. And we still have the audacity to say, God, give me a sign and I will do what you want me to do. God already gave us a sign. It's called Calvary's cross. Yeah. All right, all right. How much more did he have to give you? He gave you life. He gave you breath. All this air. Nobody got a bag of air in their pocket. You just can't create air and start breathing it. It had to come from somewhere. The sun sustained one inch, one inch drop and, and, and everything is annihilated. Who's holding the sun? Who make the stars come out? Who make the rain fall? You know my favorite saying. Who make the rain swing on that side of the street but won't rain on this side of the street? Who make the sun just stand still to go in? The moon and the sun. Who does all this? Nobody but the love of God. If you don't believe in God, you're absolutely blind. You're visually impaired. But you got to come to the realization that it's not about you. It's about God. Amen. God is real. Tell somebody God is real. God is real. They came out from Jerusalem mm -hmm. to question him. Like Mr. Magoo, they were visually impaired and they thought what they seen was true. Yeah. But how many know there's only one truth? Oh, that is the name of Jesus. Jesus. Come on, come on. No, verse 13. Being raised in society, mm -hmm. the disciples didn't fully understand who he was. So Jesus had to pull them out of their element so he can teach them more of who they are. All right. Yeah. Come on, come on, man. When you got saved, if you notice, you can hang around the friends you used to hang around. Yeah. You can go in the same place you used to go because it didn't agree with your spirit. Mm -hmm. Friends will talk about you. Yeah. yeah. And yes, Jesus was dancing. The son may say that David was dancing, but according to the prodigal son, that in the story of the prodigal son, angels in heaven is dancing when someone comes to Christ. Amen. So yeah, Jesus did dance. Mm -hmm. He's excited when one of his children come out of the dark into his mother's life. Yeah. So when you see God, don't worry about what you see with your eyes. You can't see God with your eyes. You gotta see God with your heart. And this is what he was trying to explain to the disciples. So he warned them. Look at verse 15. <clears throat> then he charged them saying, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Verse 16 says this, and they reason among themselves saying, is it because we have no bread? Now the leaven Jesus was referring to was the poisonous mindset of the hypocritical, self-righteous traditionalists that judged the world, but they weren't ready to be judged themselves. Y'all yeah. know anybody like that? Yeah. Always got something to say about somebody, but when somebody say something about them, they were here to fight. Pharisees. Hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Don't the Bible say, how can you judge your brother the big, see the beating in your brother's eye when you ain't looking at the big old plank in your eye. Yeah. Some of us walk around here with a big old telephone in our eye. We, and we see everybody else's mistake, but you can't see your own. Yeah. Yeah. The teachers 
of the Pharisees was that Jesus was authority of Satan. Mm -hmm. They said, wait a minute, that's Belshazzar, that, that's, that's Satan child. Yeah. But then King Harold, who was the king of that day, he said that he was John the Baptist being reincarnated. Mm -hmm. So when I text what Jesus was saying to his, his disciples, he said, wait a minute, be aware of what people are teaching you about me. Don't listen to society about who I am. You got to know Jesus for yourself. You can't say, well, God allowing this if you don't know God for yourself. Everybody's sitting on your sideline judging somebody and they're speaking up for God. But that's a dangerous thing to do to speak for God. Because God is a God of compassion. He is a God of love and a God of mercy. Let me prove it to you. If you're saved, Raise your hand and give God a praise. You ain't that far off seeing yourself. But he saved you. He saved you even in the darkness of an hour when you was sinful. He still saved you. Even when you messed up, he still loved you. Even when you don't even know how to say forgive me, God forgives you. In the part of your sins. So the Bible don't tell us to judge people. And tell us to love people. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. And he warned, he said, wait a minute. Get away from all this negative teaching. He said this. Why would I die on the cross? And why would I send the message back to humanity? Mm -hmm. That whosoever love, whoever, whosoever believe in my death, burial, and resurrection, they shall be saved. God didn't put stipulations on that. He didn't say if you look like Derek. He didn't say if you were white, black, pink, rich or poor. He didn't say that. He said whosoever believe in my name shall be saved. So God don't judge. So should we, so should we not. Ask somebody, what do you learn from society? What is society teaching you about Jesus Christ? What, what, what can society tell you about someone that they actually are rejecting? Right. You see, society acceptance is affecting a lot of Christians. Yeah. We pick it and we march for issues that already happened after they happened. Yeah. Are y'all with me? I ain't going to mention no names today. But one thing I have a problem with when something happened in the country, when the spotlights come on, mm -hmm. you see this person right in the front row marching for justice. Well, why weren't you marching before justice hit? Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, yeah. If you so almighty, then we should be proactive instead of reactive. Yeah. Uh -huh. Christians, we're proactive because nobody's going to see Christ until they get to heaven. Yeah. All they can see is you. So when you lay down your identity and pick up the, up the identity of Christ, you spread the love of God. And therefore, people don't have to go to hell because they see God. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. We got to be proactive and not reactive. Because his disciples were so blind. Look at verse 16. They asked a question. Instead of embracing what Jesus just said, mm -hmm. they focused on life issues. Yeah. Spiritual truth failed to impress them because they weren't open to spiritual truth. Yeah. In short, how many of you people know that you gotta embrace God? Mm -hmm. They was in the presence of God, but would not embrace God. Mm -hmm. Often we get so entangled in doing, we forget being. Yeah. 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 We so busy doing church, we forget to be the church. Yeah. Right. We're looking for the mechanics of God, but we ain't looking for God. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Society will have you messed up. Yeah. Society will have you think that you're not worthy or you're shortcoming of something, but if you're God's child, you're already worthy of everything that's on this earth because our is the Lord and therefore this belongs to God and because Jesus told you, our Father, 
you have a joint heirs with him, therefore with Jesus on, you own. So you need to start taking claim to what you own because nothing can stop a child of God. Yeah. Are y'all agreeing with me today? Too often, we get entangled in being who we are. Everybody want these humongous buildings. Everybody want these humongous gold pulpits. I told you last week, people won't even preach until they got a certain number of crap. Musicians won't even play unless you give them overabundance of money. Thank God for ours, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, we have a uh-huh. but we have the favor of God. Yeah. And see, when you worry about being what God has made you, and still worry about what you want to become, yeah. life becomes a lot easier. Yeah. People are busting their head against a brick wall, trying to get out of their lane. And a lot of times we're driving on a four lane when you should be in a two lane because you can't handle a four lane traffic. Oh, yeah. 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 You gotta learn to drive in your two lane but you're getting the four lane. Yeah. People are always gonna be, man, why don't you let me preach at your church? Man, I ain't heard you preach yesterday. <laughs> come. Hell, come let me tell you and all this false teaching, superficial hope. Yeah. 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 I don't even know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People come, oh, let me lay hands on you. Now, I want to lay hands on you first. Because I need to see some evidence that you got anointed. I need to see some evidence that you got the will of God in your life. And see, it ain't about talking to tongues. It's about using your tongue. Because that is what you got to use because God said to seek the lost. Yeah, yeah. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And if you're not teaching the Word of God as you walk about life, Amen. then you don't know your own life. Yeah. You are the will of God. But I thank God, God saves. Give God some praise. Thank you. You may be asking, preacher, how do I know when I'm not embracing God? How do I know when I'm at that point that I'm not embracing God that I have became visually impaired? And pay. The answer is when your sight becomes so blurred that you can't see Jesus Christ in your life. Mm, yeah. Let me open that up a little bit. Come on, man. When you get to a point that you got food in your face and it's a hamburger, but you're asking God to bless you with a steak. Mm, yeah. When you got a two bedroom house, and you ask God to, to bless the, to give you a four bedroom house, mm-hmm. and you ain't held Bible study in your two bedroom house. Come on, come on, man. When you got a car, mm-hmm. a you go. Thank you so many folks. Okay. Let's do something, man. What that mean? A Kia. No, Kia top of the line. I'm sorry, man. I'm just playing. When you have a car, but you don't pick nobody up to come to church. All right. yeah, yeah. And you ask God for a better car. Yeah. A bigger car. Mm-hmm. But then when you get the car, you gotta work two jobs come on, come to pay for the car. Come on, yeah. And then you can't come to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are y'all here today? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. When you become so visually impaired, impaired that the world is seen so pretty to you yeah. that you forget about Christ. Yeah. You ain't embracing him, you're embracing yourself. But we gotta learn to embrace God yeah. for who He is. Yeah. People always say, "Oh man, one day y'all can get a church. I'm gonna come back and ask hey, somebody. I got a witness. Somebody told us this. Me and Ronnie, want to stand right there. One day, the pastor, y'all can get a church, and we gonna come back. And my answer to him was, brother, that's okay. Don't come back <laughs> because I don't need that spirit in unity. Right. God has fixed us to a point where He has already blessed us. Yeah. Amen." Far more than anybody else can see. Oh, yeah. If you don't understand what God's doing here, yeah. then you're visually impaired. Yeah. Because who else can have a room next door yeah. and don't pay no debt? Who else can have a room next door and don't have no electricity bill? Yeah. Who else is, who else can have a bus oh, that they ain't never paid a dime for? Yeah. Yeah. Who else can have seats for a cushion but they ain't never paid a dime for? Yeah. Who else can send a musician? I said, D, you ain't got to give me all this. Just give me something like that. Who else can do that?
And he looked up and said, I see men walking like, like trees. trees. Walking. Verse 25. Then he put his hands on him again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everything clearly. The man couldn't see. But Bethesda is one of those cities that Matthew tells us in 1121, it was doomed. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said, woe to the Pharisees. Woe to you cities. Anytime Jesus said, woe, you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's what was doomed. Mm -hmm. But notice God's grace. Yeah. God saved an individual in a doomed land. Y'all are hearing me. All right, All right. Even in your nightclub, God saved you. Yeah. 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 Even from the midst of the people around you, God saved you. Yeah. How is it that anybody in your family can never be saved, but you the one that's saved? Yeah. God saved in the midst. He kept this promise from the flood. He said, I will never destroy the land by flood anymore. Mm -hmm. God is still saving individuals, ladies and gentlemen. He still have a way of going into a home, bringing that one saint out of that house and baptizing them with fire. Yeah. God still has favor on his people. Amen. He didn't judge the man because of society, because that's God. Each man has to be accountable for himself. Your actions have to go before judgment. Though eternal life is available, it's our choice to receive it. Amen. Ask somebody, are you sure you have eternal life? Wait a minute, that's the wrong one. Ask the one behind you, are you sure you have eternal life? But no verse 15 through 23. The blind man followed Jesus. You see, you don't need eyes to see Jesus. You only need a heart to see him. Are y'all hearing me? Jesus took the blind man by the hand. Out of his negative surroundings. He took the man from this doomed land. Uh -huh. And he told him to look up. look up. Then the man looked for himself. But Jesus said, no, you did it wrong. Mm -hmm. He told him to look up. Uh -huh. And when he looked to God, uh -huh. then he could see. All right. Some of us ain't seeing because we ain't looking to God. Yeah. You're looking within yourself when you should be looking to God. Yeah, yeah. Because the physically impaired, you said, what well, I can do. Everybody, I did this, I did that, I got this. Yeah. Man, your education don't have you nowhere. Nowhere. But in debt. Yeah. Now, if I ain't about education, God, I got that. And I, I, I support school. But when God opened the door, you got to give God the praise. Yeah. yeah. When you sit out of that car, you got to give God the praise. Yeah. When you sit at the morning table, you gotta give God the yeah, praise. Come on, come on, it ain't the doctor that saved you, it's God, that's God. with his mercy and grace that's saving you. Yeah. Yeah. God told the man, look up to my father. And the Bible said he received his sight. Yeah. And, I, I, and I would never, I can imagine what that man said. Yeah. He probably went home, baby, why the cane? Oh, I threw the cane down. It, it, the tent broke, but I still can see the day. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. God doesn't need all that. He needs your heart. heart. He don't need your wallet. He needs your heart. Yeah. He don't need uh, all this stuff in the face. He needs your heart. heart. Society was blocking, but God would open the door. Yeah. Because you have the anointing yeah. of God. Yeah. He asked him, what do you see? What do you see? And that's the question I gave you. Come on, man. What do you see today? Yeah. What are you seeing in your life? As I close, are you seeing God? Can you see God in your life? Or are you seeing yourself? You see, people ride too much on individuality. But he ain't ride on a closer God. Come on, man. Everybody's standing.